Good morning, Frank. How are you doing today? Hi, I am good. How about you? Absolutely fantastic. Man, what a journey you're on. Are you documenting this? Because what you are, are experiencing right now, so many others are too, but they're hiding, Frank. I mean, they, they are hiding. They don't want to come out. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yes. It's been a crazy experience. I mean, I have a lot of pictures of everything because it's just such a beautiful experience. And, um, yeah, like, I've just been so grateful for it. Well, you know, because I, I I haven't seen a book yet from, I mean, 25 seasons of NBC's The Voice. I've not seen a book from anybody who's performed on it, what the experience was like, because, I mean, the, what, what you guys are going through is such a beautiful expression. It's almost like a rose, you know, blossoming. Yeah. No, yeah, I get you. It is. Wow. For, where did you discover music? When did you know that, oh, my God, I've got a voice and it doesn't sound like anybody else in class? I, I think there's something going on here. Um, I think that happened when I was like three or four and I started singing because um, back in M Mexico, when I used to live there, we used to do these karaoke nights every Christmas. Yeah. And so I started singing and my parents and my family liked it. And then I started um, volunteering in my school to sing because we uh, in our gymnasium, every Friday we would have a karaoke night too and in my elementary. And so then I started um, singing there and then I started noticing that people liked it. So that's when I kind of started singing. It had to have been fun because I love that edge of when, when I do karaoke, It's there, there's still that edge of nervousness and excitement. And then when people react to it, when you're finishing a song, it's like, oh, my God, that felt quite nice. Yeah, no, yeah. And at the beginning, I was like, oh, my God, people like it. Am I good at this? I was like, or am I just being delusional? But <laughs> <laughs> it ended up being that I'm pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> but you're no newcomer to to the tele televised competition. I mean, I mean, at the age of 11, you were already on the tube. Yes. Um, at the age of 11, I was um, in uh, Levels Kids, which is the voice kids. And so it was a very similar experience. And it was like that was the first time that I actually stepped on like a stage like and fully sang because before that I had like performed two times. So it kind of really took me out of my comfort zone. I don't know about you, but you, Frank, but I, I love the stage. When when my feet first go out there and I can look at those empty seats and stuff, my imagination takes off. What about yours? No, yeah, I love performing. I mean, I, I feel like um, whenever I'm on stage, I'm just like myself. And that's truly what I love doing. Do you have a moment when you go out there and you envision it? In other words, you, you try to see yourself and how people will react? Because to me, it's like a connection with the room before the people arrive. Yeah. I mean, I kind of like, even when I'm just practicing before, like even for this, the voice, I had every day I would practice, I would envision how the crowd would react. You know, we have to manifest. Yeah. And so it could be true. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that part of that manif manifestation is that we've got to make sure that our voices are in tune and ready to go as well. And and some people, they'll go, why aren't you talking? Because I don't want to. I need to get my energy up and I need to preserve this little monkey of a machine. Yeah, I agree 100 percent. What are you doing to preserve that voice? Um, well, I normally um, do vocal warm ups every day. Uh, I also have a vocal teacher from Mexico um, who I see virtually and um so yeah i just had to practice a lot and that's how i like maintain it you know li listeners don't understand that when we practice with our voices and things they they, they think you know oh you're going to exercise your vocal cords it's like doing push-ups and running and walking and it's like man it really i mean you gotta you gotta get your heart rate up because that's part of the breathing p pattern but what what kind of vocal things are they doing with you yeah um one thing that um i would do a lot over there and i was kind of known for on the voice because i was the only one who do it is I breathe into a balloon mm -hmm. and then I inhale all the air and then I like sing while I breathe out of the balloon. And so that helps connect uh, my diaphragm a lot to my air and it helps me, you know, like reach like high notes very easily. That's so funny that you do that because I, what, part of my training is that I, I take a walk on a path through this forest and I have to talk and I have to use my imagination and, and really rely so, on, on things so I, so I know how to keep my breathing under control even though my body is in movement. Oh, my God. I had never heard of that. Yeah. I call it a transition walk, you know, because your body is moving and, and it really and, and I really I, I started doing it for radio because we're always in motion in a radio station studio. You could be somewhere else in the building. and All of a sudden you got to come back and do a break and and you don't want to sound like you're winded. So you've got to you've got to basically condition yourself for situations. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's crazy. Yeah. So now now what is it like for you to be in L.A., though, for for NBC's The Voice? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's drier air, except for this year where they're having a lot of rain. But the thing is, though, is that it's still a different kind of climate. 
No, yeah. Um, because of the um, difference in climate, I would have to. I bought this like vocal mist because my my vocal cords did get um very like dry, mm -hmm. and so that's a pretty big issue. And so I had to keep them hydrated. So I bought I bought a vocal mist, and that's like I would use like um twice like a day sometimes. Yeah, because I mean you know coming from Texas, then to New York, and then to L.A., that's three completely different atmospheres. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Being a 19-year-old in New York City, I mean, I love me the Big Apple. I love that city, but my God, 19 and you're you're set free in New York? I know. It's crazy. I, it was always my dream to live in New York, and I never actually thought that it would happen. Uh, but thankfully, uh, I was able to get into a good college, and so now I'm here, and it's been crazy fun. So going from a world where, you know, in Texas, everybody's driving around, but in, in New York, you're walking around. Was that in, in, or either that or you're riding the train? What what was the transition like? Yeah, well, I'm really bad at driving. I have to be honest. So, like, I didn't really miss much because I just don't. I'm just not <laughs> the best at it. So, like, uh, I really like riding the train, especially because it's just like you get to sit down and then sometimes you hear like your own like studio recordings that you've done on the train. Yeah. And like, it's like. I don't know. I just like it a lot. Oh, so so basically, you use the the train as a place just to go, so you can study your art. Then it gives you it gives you plenty of time, alone time, without being interrupted by others. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, what was it like to perform a Lady Gaga song? We're talking about the Queen of Music. I I love me some Gaga. Oh my God! I mean, she's been one of the my literal icons since I was little, and so it was like. When I we got told that we got chosen that song to sing by Janet Shea, I literally screamed. I was like, "Oh my god, this song is like I love the song so much." And it, I, I mean, ever since it came out, and when I saw her perform it at the Super Bowl, I was like, "I want to perform that one day." Wow! And then and then you do. So what is that like? I mean, I mean, my God! I mean, the world got to hear you sing it. I know it was it was just so beautiful because um, I just felt so deeply connected to the song just because of what she has done for the queer community. Yeah. And. As a queer artist myself, I felt like I needed to like uh, be able to like uh, hold it to a, the level that she did, and so I really, really enjoyed performing it, especially with the twins because they're amazing. Well, look at what you're doing with your own community. I mean, the Gay Straight Alliance. My God, you are opening up a door of connection here, Frank. Yeah, that that was. Um, I I knew that before I left my hometown. I knew that I needed to try and make some change and. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to do that with the help of uh, my teachers and my friends and some people in my community. And so now, like, hearing that all people from back home are supporting me, that my school has re is reposting me, even as a queer uh, Latinx artist that I am, I just it just feels like a whole, like, 1360. Um, I feel like um, there's a lot of progress being made, and I'm really happy for that. Well, we need voices like yours, and the reason why is because it feels like we're going backwards. I mean, it, 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 all of a sudden, you know, we, we had the marriages, everything, everybody felt free, and then all of a sudden it seems like there's a lot of voices that are that are downplaying and want to, want to break things up, and it's like we need people like yourself, especially 19-year-olds, Frank. We need to have that voice out there in the public. Yeah, no, definitely, because I feel like, for me, when I was smaller, um, the only reason why I've always wanted to be um, as hyper feminist as I am and feel comfortable being like that while on stage was always because I saw this other contestant on The Voice Australia called Sheldon Riley. And um, I feel like the more the, uh, that we're able to, you know, show like a queerness on stage and on national television, I feel like the more we're able to help others, um, you know, be their true authentic selves. You're so strong at what you do, and I mean, you survived cyberbullying. I mean, the way that you moved through that, and you have found peace and mindfulness in, in your journey. No, yeah. Um, when I was on this other reality TV show, and I wasn't out yet, um, I did experience a lot of cyberbullying, um, and it hurt the most because I wasn't comfortable with who I was. Yeah. And so, um, but I feel like that was what really motivated me to push myself out of my comfort zone, and it has led me to become the person I am today for sure. You know, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they did a story on Ricky Martin and, and how it was very difficult for him to step out as well. And, and and that's why it's so important for the artist to come out and just say, this is who I really am. Or even, as Gaga would say, I was born this way. And But he said it was very difficult. What about for you? Yeah, I feel like uh, with artists like those, it's very difficult because you already have your own branding. Yeah. And so um, a lot of times it's hard for queer artists to you know, find their way into the mainstream because there's not really a lot of genres that like 
promote a lot of queer artists. And so I feel like for me, um, I knew that back then when I would sing mariachi, it was kind of my branding. And even though I love my mariachi music and my culture, I knew that if I, if I was going to be on national TV one last time, it would have to be as my authentic self because I just wanted to represent, you know, my intersectionality of both being um, a femme, um, que um, queer uh, man, as well as a Latinx um, um, Hispanic um, um, person. Yeah. Don't you think that we Americans need to be educated at what mar mariachi is? We think it's something that you get at a restaurant, but there is so much more to it than that. Oh my God, of course. No, yeah, it's like... Um, it's, in my opinion, the most beautiful genre of music I've ever heard. A mariachi music, it's kind of... Uh, it's a music, Mexican music, uh, musical tradition of a full ensemble with violins, guitarron, there's like guitars, there's trumpets. And basically um, they, they create this ensemble where uh, there they, there's a lot of um, musicality being involved with all these instruments, including the harp, which is also beautiful. And then there's like singers, there's choruses that they all sing together. It's really beautiful. And so back at home, we have a mariachi program starting from elementary and you have to keep auditioning and there's JV and varsity in high school, things like that. Wow. And we go on national competitions that are very, very competitive. And um, yeah, like these competitions are held all throughout Texas. Um, one time um, my group from um, back at home, they went to America's Got Talent when I was in middle school. So I, I wasn't able to go. The varsity went to America's Got Talent and they did really good. And so it's like a big thing and it's such a beautiful way for like our community to come together and like hear this beautiful music. Well, it's it's also about dance and what I what I love most about it is the way we dress because they you have to dress up if you're going to do mariachi. You're not going to be up there in torn jeans and a sloppy shirt. Oh no, yeah, of course. You have to wear the traje and you have to respect it as well when you wear it. Um and yeah, I feel like it's it's just so beautiful. Yeah, because and history is so important when it comes to the to the, to the mariachi music. I mean, you you've got to live the history in order to be in the present. No, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, working with Dan and Shay, I got to tell you, I was with Dan and Shay when they were total nobodies. They came into my studio wearing just hats. They had they didn't have the fuzz on their face or anything like that. But they they were they had a dream, and their dream I'm, we're going to become big in country music. My God, Frank, they're huge in music right now. No, yeah, they are. They're very huge right now, especially because they're going on tour right now. It's crazy. I've been seeing all their clips. Do you when, okay when when they get when they prepare to go on tour? Do they talk about it? I mean, how, what what kind of conversations do you have with someone like Dan and Shay? Shay and Shay are just very supportive people. I mean, I in the show, I would say like they're like my tios. They're literally like my family at this point because they're just such sweethearts yeah. and. Um, and no matter what, they always are there just to support you and you know motivate you to like be your your yourself um, when you're on stage and perform. More than just being performers, they are authentic songwriters. Do you get to talk to them about their songwriting capabilities? Um, I wasn't able to talk to them fully about their uh, their writing capabilities. Uh, we were kind of just more so like talking about like technique mm -hmm. and like like how to reach high notes uh, especially in the battles um and then how to like well in the battle since i went up against the duo and then they were kind of um, helping me a lot and guiding me a lot with how to you know balance the harmonies and then um how to go through with all that process hitting those high notes how important is that because as a viewer of nbc's the voice when you guys go up and uh, into that upper range i mean i really do go oh my god no yeah I, it was crazy because I did not know I could reach those high, those high notes before I went into the show. Even when I did my casting call, I did not send videos of me hitting those high notes. And on, it was until the twins and I started like playing around with the song and I was like, okay, I'll just try and do the upper harmony. And I just did it and I was like, um, and then um, we go to rehearsal one day and the uh, the the, uh, the music director tells me, um, what notes are you hitting? Like, this is like crazy. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he was like, and I was like, well, I, I thought I was a baritone coming into the show. He was like, no, the heck, you're not a baritone. And I was like, oh, my God, okay. So, like, that was the first time that I, like, ever started actually, like, exploring my upper range. Man, see, when, when I was in, in chorus and stuff, I wanted to be the baritone, but they always kept putting me in there with a the tenor, and I, I didn't want to have the high falsetto, and, and I always felt uncomfortable about it. But these days, having that higher voice, uh, you know, is, is acceptable. I wish I would have had this when I was a kid. 
No, yeah, I feel like yeah, music has in general like transitioned a lot from like the back days, and now it's a lot of like high notes. Like a lot of people like it or they enjoy it. How are you protecting your voice when you go into a higher range? Because that's like exercising a new muscle. Do you, do you get the sore throat? Um, I used to when I would sing mariachi music. I had a very different technique, um, and I used to get. I wasn't able to hit the, as as high notes as I do now. And I think it's because I really changed the way I use my diaphragm. Yep. And the air control, because I used to use a lot of my, uh, an issue that I would do is like, I would use a lot of my jaw muscles, which, you know, like strains your voice. And now I started um, using more of my diaphragm and because of the connection that I have with the diaphragm and the air, I get to reach higher notes much, uh, much um, easier. You're going to think I'm a freak, but usually when I, when I know that I'm not using my diaphragm, I'll put my hand on my lower stomach to make sure that I'm breathing from that part of my body. What do you, how do you yeah. know you, you do it too? No. Yeah. I, I have to put my, uh, my hands there, like around kind of like my waist. Yeah. Oh, uh, see, like if it's pushing the diaphragm, if it's pushing out. Yeah, yeah. But, but see, a lot of people don't understand that because it's like even in martial arts. One thing that, that I would do is the person that I was going to compete against, I would go over and talk with them and see if they were breathing from their chest or if they were breathing from their diaphragm. And if it was coming from the diaphragm, it was going to be a good battle in that ring. No, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So what are you learning from this entire process? Because I mean, you're you're a student, and we're watching you. No, yeah. Um, well, um, what I've been learning a lot is, you know, like the importance to just be yourself on stage and on TV. I feel like I have gotten a lot of like super sweet messages being like, oh, thank you for opening doors for us. Or thank you for, you know, motivating me as a queer um, artist to keep pushing and keep motivating myself. And so those are like, like I feel like that's the most beautiful thing about this process that, uh, you know, I'm able to... Tr- I'm able to connect with other artists out there who resemble to like my back, my background of um, borders or my background of disadvantages. Yeah, see, I mean, it goes all the way back to what we were talking about in the beginning. There are people that are locked up in their homes, in their bedroom, in their own little world because they're afraid to come out. And then when you see someone like yourself, Frank, all of a sudden they go, well, if he's doing it, maybe I should at least take a step forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That, that's kind of what I wanted to to be. I was a little scared and I still am because... Um, you know, people are just going to hate, especially um, a lot of other people uh, in Texas and, uh, and all those other places. But I feel like I I knew that I had to take a risk because um, I knew it could help eventually uh, for other people. So when you're getting emails or you're getting social media things, I mean, usually what I do so that I don't feel like that I'm under attack is I'll just read the first sentence and then, OK, got to go by. Don't even write me a full letter. Just I'll, I'll read the first sentence. That's all I need. What about you? No, yeah. Um, I just stopped reading comments because yeah. after like you know, multiple um, TV reality shows, I just knew that there was going to be hate and I knew that they were going to be wrong at the end of the day. And I, and I know that like what I have done, I'm really proud of it. And the person that I am, I'm really proud of that too. And so I just um, kind of um, neglect all the hate and just, you know, like have a bunch of positivity. Yep, yep, yep. And you've got to generate it too. And I can feel your positive energy. That's always with you because I've always believed that winning is a choice. So is a positive energy. Yeah. No, yeah. You. I mean, you attract what you give out to the universe. Yeah. That's kind of how I see it. Yeah. So we got to we got to talk the business side of the music industry, because I really believe that that you're you guys are under attack right now with TikTok. You have done absolutely nothing wrong, but the government wants to shut down TikTok. That is a major platform for you. I know that's actually insane. There's like other greater issues that are like actually like need to be fixed other than banning TikTok. I don't really get it, but it's crazy. Uh, But at least we still have Instagram and I have. I, I'm manifesting and I have high hopes that TikTok will not be, get banned. Are, are you preparing for it, though? Because there's got there, there's other platforms out there. I mean, a lot of people are telling me that they're going over to Reels, R-E-E-L-Z. Oh, I had not heard of that. I know that people do a lot of Reels, but on Instagram, that's yeah. kind of like what I was thinking to just like go and rely on. Yeah, but see, I, I want more than just 10 or 15 seconds of it, though. I mean, because I'm, I'm just getting into the song and all of a sudden pff, it's gone. Yeah. No, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like maybe YouTube will start like its thing again. Yeah. All right. So where can people find you on on the social media so they can give you some love and support? Because you're at that part. Here's here's what I mean by the love and the support. You're on the show now. You're getting beautiful cover across the country. But when the show is over, I still want people to be talking about you, Frank. No, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, all my social media handles are Frank Garcia with two Ks and two A's. Um, on the end of Frank and then on the end of Garcia. Uh, that's where you can find me anywhere. 
I love it. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, my God, yes. It, w- I, it would be such an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Well, you, thanks for even taking the time to talk with me, dude. <laughs> thank you. You be brilliant today, okay? Yes, thank you so much.